What do you get when you take Black Cat, Hawkeye, and the, uh, Submariner and put them in an arcade cabinet? Well, Spider-Man the video game, obviously. Welcome to Does Whatever a Spider Can, in which we take a look back at the webhead's long and varied gaming career and find out just how much they replicate Spider-Man's signature powers. Whilst there have been many different games based on one of Marvel's biggest moneymakers, only one actually proclaims itself as the definitive video game. Well, okay, there were definitely many games called Spider-Man before, and there have been some great games to come since. But this is Spidey's first, while not quite solo, foray into the Coin Arena. Developed and released by Sega in 1991, Spider-Man the video game on the surface looks like your box standard side-scrolling beaten up of the era. You can choose between four characters, you walk right and hit things. Right? Well, not exactly. Whilst it's not as memorable as its bigger brother franchises like Double Dragon and Final Fight, Spider-Man the video game has enough unique differences that make it different enough to warrant looking at. Plus, as this is a Spider-Man gaming retrospective, it's as good as any as a jumping off point. So let's just quickly dive into the plot, however thin it is. Kingpin has stolen the ancient artifact called the Sorcerer's Stone, and is using it to supersize some of Spidey's villains as he makes his escape. You punch your way through Scorpion, Venom, Lizard, Electro, Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, Sandman, Hobgoblin, before taking out the Kingpin. But oh no, Dr. Doom steals the stone, so you gotta go beat his tin can ass up too. Along the way, you punch the crap out of a never-ending array of ninjas, mafioso, thudbutt, Model Dudikoff, and my favorite, the Monkey Man. Each character is basically the same, although their attack styles appear to only be the real variants in how they play. You have six axis movement on the joystick and a jump and attack button, which also allows you to jump kick and knock back your enemies, which can be very useful in some situations. If you hit attack at the peak of your jump, you can also perform a swing attack for extra damage. And if you hit both attack and jump simultaneously, you can perform your special attack. However, this does take out a chunk of your life, and I honestly find it to not be that effective. This leads us to the main problem of the game, its health system. On first look, it might seem a little strange to see numbers instead of either a health bar or lives, and this is because it's a gauntlet-based health system. Yep, it's a beat-em-up game where health not only goes down with severe pummeling, but slowly goes down by itself as well. Remember that this is an arcade game, and such has been designed to suck away those quarters. Therefore, it's next to impossible to complete a stage on a single credit, let alone the entire game. There are a few health pickups, but they are few and far between. Seemingly, they only appear as it goes into its most well-known gameplay mechanic. See, while you spend most of the game as a big, lumbering, macho man on screen, or a less macho but equally kick-ass woman, the screen will occasionally change from the beat-em-up to a side-scrolling platformer. This usually happens at least once or twice on each level, usually after you beat up one of the several Spider-Villain mini-bosses. In this part of the stage, you use a range-based attack to take out minions, jump and occasionally climb on platforms, and make your way to the end of the area and occasionally take on other mini-bosses before stepping back into the big boy arena. This translation is jarring at first because you think you've glitched the game, but and it takes a little getting used to. The biggest issue I find after playing so many later platformers is you try and jump down the platforms themselves only to find that some are out and some don't. Neither is clearly identifiable until you've progressed enough to figure out which one is which. But at that stage you either don't care or have already moved on. These bits are good for breaking up the beat-em-up monotony and progresses the gameplay along without being too distracting. Unfortunately, they also get repetitive enough that I think even the developers ran out of ideas in level design and just gave up when you hit that barrier. I mean, literally, there's just one section where you're just running downhill for the lack of about a good, and it's just not interesting. The beat-em-up sections, for the most part, are all right. Tough enough to feel challenging, and easy enough that you don't want to rage quit just yet. I have no idea how this plays in multiplayer, and this suffers from many early beaten up difficulty ramping in single player. Sometimes you just get swamped by both sides, and you can use your life within practically seconds. It seems this would be easier in even two player, but then it might be too easy on the lighter areas, and player progression could be frustrating on platform. Not to mention that lackluster health pickups will probably cause more fighting outside the cabinet. For the most part, the graphics are nice. Characters have comic book word balloons, and animations of characters aren't bad at all. I especially like all the animations they made for all the different Spider-Man villains. The characters 
characters themselves are decent for the most part, Black Cat being the best looking, and in game too. That being said, Spider-Man just looks a little hulking, no pun intended, and just doesn't walk and stand in a way that feels particularly right for the character. Namor is just inherently hilarious with his classic costume, and I've already forgot about Hawkeye. One of the weirdest aspects is the sound choices. While not bad at times, it seems like the sound selection is just outright bizarre. Characters have their own unique sound fonts. Enemy death screams are just a little too comedic. Although to be fair, it's got some nice voice dialogue for its time. Huh, spider sense tingling. Signaling danger. Hawkeye, Submariner, Black Cat, Spider-Man. Interestingly enough, according to the Wikipedia, the game's soundtrack is at least partly comprised from tunes from Sega's 1986 game, Quartet. Having never played that game, I can't verify this, but the music seems to fit okay enough to not be noticeable. To be honest, I think the songs from some of the latest Spider-Man games would have fitted a little better. So let's have a look at the characters, because if there's anything that's truly bizarre about this game, it's the character choices. First off, we have the titular Spider-Man. And I love these little title cards played on the main title playthrough. If you're a fan, then this is the character you'll play the most, and to be fair, he seems to be the player the best. Nothing else to say much really, we'll get to that important question at the end. But he slings and shoots web, and he certainly beats up thieves of any size. Next is Black Cat, aka Felicia Hardy former thief and former spider friend with benefits. Black Cat's special attacks are based around her claws and grappling hook. She's also the great choice to take out the oppressive patriarchal power structure. Screw you, Kingpin, you fat ass corporate pig. Interestingly enough, Black Cat is the only playable character that actually has a strong connection to the war crawler, especially by my previous statement, if you know what I mean. Alas, by this stage in comics, Peter was already married to Mary Jane, and his relationship with Felicia was rocky at best during this time. They would eventually become better friends, but that's probably because he invited her into the video game. That being said, her inclusion in this game was a great move in my opinion, and perhaps the only other female character that might have been more appropriate would have been Firestar. Hell, I have no idea why they just didn't include Iceman and make it a Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends game. Black Cat would later appear in many video games in the future, and would even be playable in a few of them. Next up, for some reason, is Hawkeye. The Avenger who, to the best of my knowledge, has no solid connection to Spider-Man beyond past team-ups. Please keep in mind that this predates the major recent character developments in the comics and the popularity boost from Jeremy Renner's take on the character. What's even stranger is that Hawkeye was also a playable character in Captain America and the Avengers, released earlier on in that year, so someone at Sieg was clearly a fan. For those that don't know, in the comics continuity, Hawkeye used to be a villain who Captain America took under his winged head and made him into an Avengers in the 60s, wherein he spent the majority of the last five decades in some form or another. The TLDR is that at this stage in the comics, Spider-Man and Hawkeye didn't seem to have much of a connection. All that aside, Hawkeye just seems pretty forgettable in this game. His special attack predictably is that he shoots arrows, and his jump attack is just a downward kick thrust. I honestly had more fun playing the other characters and never truly really bothered going back to him. Sorry Clint, you just weren't interesting back then as you are today. Finally we have Marvel's first mutant, and in his first and only playable arcade appearance. Only having a brief cameo in the earlier Captain America game. For those that don't know, Namor first appeared as a villain in Marvel Comics No. 1 by Timely Comics, later changing the company itself to Marvel, before becoming a hero and straddling that line ever since. My spidey senses tingling over here. Namor bewilderingly appears to have electricity based powers in this game, something that I was shocked to find had actually existed briefly in the 1960s, where he could mimic aquatic life before losing it not long afterwards. However, in an even earlier adventure, he could expel water from his body. So this might be the lesser of the two evils for a projectile base attack. His peak jump attack is just thrusting towards the enemy, which makes a little bit of sense as he is a water-based hero, and he looks like he's making a splash. Like Hawkeye, Namor's inclusion in the game just doesn't make sense, as Namor is often associated more with the Fantastic Four than any other Marvel property. 
In fact, the only connection any of these three offsiders is that they were all considered villains at the start of their careers before eventually becoming heroes at some point. Spidey sure knows how to pick them. This game will take about an hour to get through on main, and definitely be prepared to hit that credit button. And overall, I think it just scrapes under the realm of an arcade classic. A retro re-release could serve this game well, as it's never been ported outside of the arcade, so the only way you can really experience it is through emulation. In fact, why isn't this game that well known? It apparently got some great reviews at the time, and my first experience with it was in the early 90s at the time zone in William Street, Perth. It didn't seem to be a widely distributed machine. I can imagine that it being released in 1991, that Sega just didn't have the console capable of running it as it was on their 32-bit arcade system. However, Captain America and the Avengers would see ports to the 8 and 6-bit during this time. Maybe because that was developed by Data East, and then Konami would later make the infamous six-player X-Men arcade game, which only really got it a port released seven years ago. So there's probability of some licensing issues here. Perhaps we'll never find out. Thankfully, we still have ways to play this hidden treasure. As an interesting aside, there are some similarities between the games. Cap has the Gauntlet Health system, but doesn't include the time-based drain. And X-Men has the Power Health drain, but you can still play it come without using your major powers. On the whole, I still prefer Spider-Man, I will admit X-Men plays a little bit better, as it doesn't feel quite as stiff, and the character selection doesn't include Hawkeye. But wait, we still haven't answered the main question yet. Does this do whatever a spider can? For the most part, this game covers most of the main spider powers. He can swing somewhat, he can shoot webbing, he can wall crawl, but most of this is restricted due to the gameplay. There is definitely a noble effort on the game developers to balance out his powers with this gameplay, especially what would likely be some restrictions on the machine at the time. Part of me wishes they could at least incorporate the spider sense in some way, even if it's just in the cinematic. Final thoughts are that this is an almost great game. Even though it's not the best representation of Spidey, it's definitely not the worst. Oh, these will definitely be turning up soon, so stick around, true believers.